This is Twit. So uh, there is a list at 9 to 5 Mac of uh, Catalyst apps that you can already get. Look up uh, Planny 3 Carrot. Micah Sargent installed Carrot uh, right away. But there's this one little thing. If you paid for Carrot on Mac on uh, iOS, you still have to pay for it on Mac OS. And it's $15 on Mac OS. There's no bundling yet. So they have a process where iOS apps can just be universal binaries. You download once, it'll run on iPhone or iPad. That's up to the developer. They can also make separate ones. For And the watch is the same thing. For tvOS, they have app bundles where it's not the same binary, but you can share receipts so that if you buy it for iOS, if the developer wants, you can also get the tvOS version. Um, they don't have that system yet for Mac apps. Uh, and I don't know what the ETA is, but basically there's no way for developers to say you have the iOS app, here's the Mac app. And in some ways, some developers don't want to because they're like, I, I had to make a separate app, so it's not too much right. to ask for you to buy that separate app. Right. But there are developers who want to, and they're not able to right now. Uh, Jira from Atlassian, our sponsor Atlassian. Jira Cloud is available. That was actually an early uh, adopter. Yeah. Um, uh, this is one that Micah uh, was talking about today on iOS Today, which I really like. It's called Make Pass. If you have a loyalty card, for instance, that doesn't have a iOS app, a wallet app, you can use MakePass to create a barcode, which you can add to your wallet on your phone. So it makes it easy to use your loyalty cards at oh, places wow. like CVS. This is a brilliant 99 <laughs> does cent. This, does this work for like not, not just loyalty tickets. cards, but to, yeah, like, like yeah. tickets to concerts. Yes. <laughs> Anything oh, with I a like barcode this. or QR code. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? So you put it in your like wallet, it. double tap. It's right there. You slide it up. There it is. It's, yes, it's done. I like this. Isn't that good? Yeah. 99 cents. Make pass. That's a catalyst uh, app. I'm going to get that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank Mike. I've got, I've, yes, yeah. I will. Because I, I have so many times where I'll go, I'll, I'll you know, I want to go to a concert and, you know, they only have like this paper so printout. Annoying. And like, I don't want to yeah. bring this giant piece yeah. of paper with me. Yeah. It's the scanning a barcode. An Why animal? can't I just use that? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fiery feeds. That's the newsreader I like on the Mac. On the uh, iOS is now on the Mac too with Via Catalyst. That's nice. Countdowns. It tends to be kind of simple iOS style uh, apps mostly, right? Um, but I think how hard is it? Does anybody has anybody done this or know? Well, how I mean, hard Apple said flip a switch, right? Like you, you, flip, you check, no, they, they, you you check a box <laughs> that'll build it, and then you spend as much time as you possibly can making it good. <laughs> I think there's like two sets of developers right now. One who have who've been able to do, you know, they have iPad apps, they bring them over. There's not much to change, and then you have like really ambitious developers, like the Steve Trotton Smiths and and the James Thompsons, who just they don't have. It's it's year one. It's version one. It's zero point zero, and they just don't have all the APIs or all the documentation they want, so they can't make like the higher level apps that they want to make yet. So I think they have a collection of apps that are abiding until they have everything they need. Here's one I'd love to have, although it makes more sense on a phone than it does on a Mac. This is one Steve Trout and Smith uh, actually tweeted about called Post It App. You take a picture of of real world Post It notes. And then you can drag them <laughs> to your uh, Mac, capture them by dragging them over, and uh, and you got them now. I think that's a good idea. Although, honestly, you should really use your phone for that since it's got a better camera. How do, I don't even know how. Yeah, to, uh, yeah. How do you? You have to bring your laptop yeah, with you to point, the refrigerator point, or whatever. <laughs> point the refrigerator. Good notes. Hold the iMac steady. Good Notes, which is a great uh, program we've recommended practically since iOS began, is now available mm -hmm. on the Mac as well. That's So that's, I think, the best thing. I use TripIt all the time. I can get TripIt now on my Mac instead of having to use the website. So that's going to be the best thing, which is these iOS apps that are kind of must-have. There's know. like... There's like three kinds of apps that this is great for. The first is existing apps that have either been abandoned or left fallow, like the Twitter app. You know, yeah. they can, instead of investing in in keeping it up to date, they can just keep catalyzing whatever they're doing on iOS. Then there's developers who would really like to have a Mac OS app, but they just never had the resources and time to learn AppKit. And that's a whole other thing. And now they can leverage all the, all the talent they have in UIKit and catalyze it and bring it over. And then there are these Electron apps that like Slack and Skype that just sit there wrapped up in Chromium, sucking down our battery life and destroying our performance. And I don't know if they're going to move to Catalyst, but it, it, it would make a lot of people feel real, real happy with those companies yeah. if they did. Although if, I mean, one of the reasons people do Electron apps is because they're portable. So it's not a hard thing to do to make Electron apps. But they're already doing iOS. iPad apps. 
Right. That's the thing is they're yeah. all doing iPad apps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and, and a lot of them are also doing web apps. And so there's a there's a bunch of uh, – one of the things I've learned from using a Chromebook for the past several months is that oftentimes, uh, oftentimes the web app version of something is just as good as whatever mobile app they've created Absolutely. for it. So that's – it'll be interesting to see how many companies decide to embrace uh, embrace Catalyst rather than saying, well, if we're going to even flipping a switch, why are we even bothered to support – uh, support an app that will have to go through the app store, whereas we could support the same group of people through a web app that we never have. We can just simply push out an update whenever we want. Apple will never say, oh, you can't put the Taiwanese flag in the background to celebrate this thing. We're, we're pulling your app for, uh, for until uh, until uh, hell runs over. That's, it's, it'll be an interesting metric to see. Yeah, I'm a fan yeah. uh, of, um, oh, shoot, what was I? I forgot what I was going to say I was a fan of. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, let's, life and love and beauty. I'm a fan of life, love and beauty. I'm a fan of PWAs, progressive web apps. That's what you were talking yeah. about. And uh, I love to see more and more apps do that. But uh, Apple's, uh, at least for a long time, Apple's support of progressive web apps was not first class. They have to create uh, service workers in Safari and so forth. Yeah. But that, is that better than it used to be? Because I now wonder yes. if that's a conflict. Like Apple may say, well, we really don't want to support progressive web apps for the very reasons, Andy, that developers might like them. We'd like to make sure everything goes through the store. They didn't do it at all for a while because right. they their thinking was we have a native platform and right. progressive web apps are like the last gasp of breath for companies who couldn't make a sustainable native platform. So why would we make you know a subclass native platform? But then um, you know more. I don't know what the way what the other arguments won out and they started adding. Uh, things like uh, service agents yeah. and and other stuff to WebKit starting, I think, last year. I I hope they yeah. do. Uh, our our for instance, our discussion forum, uh, Twit Community, that uh, is a web app. Can be it's a P, can be a PWA, and on uh, you know an appropriate play. It works pretty well in Safari. You just say put that on the home screen. It does work. But I'd like to yeah. see. Uh, what, know, remember Web 2.0 apps with a sweet solution? How yeah, far we've come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the problem <laughs> oh, but, with all this stuff. Well, one other factor here is that uh, if Elizabeth Warren gets elected president, she really, really, really is ambitious on saying that anti any any amount of power that any large tech company has amassed for itself needs to be distributed and made available to other companies. So if if Apple decides to hold fast to that, I'm not saying they won't be able to do to uh, uh, fail to support progressive web apps very well. Well, but at some point, they might have to explain to a subcommittee, here's why we're not supporting progressive web apps. It's not, No, it's not to force people to use our app store. It's because we actually feel as though uh, a native app is a much better solution for our users.